Hey guys, Jay Hoyt here. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to make you guys aware. Over 85% of you guys are not subscribed that watch my videos. So make sure to go down below, check are you subscribed? Is it your first time here? Make sure you hit that subscribe button and enjoy the video. What's going on guys? Jay Hoyt back with you. Today, welcome back to episode number 21 of our franchise mode with the Anaheim Ducks. We are back here at the start of the regular season after having a big shakeup, if you will, on our team. A big offseason, not necessarily a big draft, not necessarily a big you know, free agent signing, but more of trades, more of uh, retooling and getting hopefully the right pieces in place. That, w that can continue us on towards our goal of this day of League Cup. So we're four years in, five years in. I still don't know. Maybe we'll figure that out eventually. But here we are. Start of the regular season. We had a successful preseason. Um, I don't remember our record. But we did find out kind of who is sticking on our team, who is not. So if you guys didn't see last episode, uh, some of these names are going to surprise you. Or you may not remember who we actually got. But this is how we're gonna start the pre or not the preseason, the regular season. It's gonna look a little bit different than normal. We decided to shake it up a little bit and have more of a well-rounded team. And uh, you know, our forward group is actually insane. Like if you really look at it. Uh, so on the first line, we're gonna start with Ehlers, Zegris, and we moved Mercer up to that top line. We're going to see what we can get out of him playing on that top line. Obviously, we can always put Terry back there. You know, I'm not really too worried about him not performing on that top line. Uh, but I want to see what this new second line is going to consist of. Having Jake DeBrusque there, along with Morgan Frost, new acquisition. And then we put Terry down there in the second line. So we get like a, set, uh, a sniper, kind of like a playmaker, and a two-way uh, two guy on that second line. A pretty much all offensive first line. Third line, we have Palat, who I actually was really excited to get because we all know what he can do to a team. We have McTavish down there on the third line, as well as Perot. Obviously, I'd love to give him a bigger role, but unfortunately, due to our team, we just can't at this point. Uh, fourth line, we brought up Inglis. He actually had a really good uh, preseason. Uh, so we're going to test him out for the first kind of like 10 or 15 or so games and, uh, and kind of see where he is. After that, and then down there, of course, we have Dino. I really wish we could have like withdrew that contract. Um, not that he's gonna be a bad acquisition by any means. Um, and obviously, he's an 85 overall, making 2.5 million dollars for the next two years for us. And obviously, he's a good pickup. But at the same time, I wanted to give some other people chances, and then we kind of came into the frost trade and kind of solidified that. So. Not that that's a bad pickup by any means, but uh, of course, I, I really wish I kind of didn't. Um, and then we have Elias Anderson down there as well. Um, as far as this year, if Deneau doesn't perform, obviously he's on the fourth line, so he can't really judge that too much. We might end up looking for a trade for him if we find a right deal, maybe even next year or even like draft trade deadline time or even the off season, just to try to see if we can get a better piece back for our defense, which is going to be the next thing on our list here. So we have our new acquisition, our top left defensive, uh, defensive, I should say, Nicholas Harold on the first line, 87 overall, 20 years old, uh, does fit along here with Drysdale. Mitnikov down here on the second line along with Brett Pesci. Another acquisition this offseason. We move Peterson down and then we have Jet Wu down there as well. The Young Guns, they did okay, but it's either play them on the third line and not really get much out of them or get him down for another year in the AHL, solidify your craft, still grow. I mean, they're still, how old are they? They're still 21 and 20 years old. So I'm not really too worried about, you know, forcing them up in the NHL. Maybe after this year, you know, we have Peterson for the, what, next two years. So, you know, we got some time. Plus Jet Wu, I mean, he's just one of those guys that, I hate to say it, but he's kind of replaceable. So if we get an upgrade there, we want to bring up the young guys, you know, we will. Like, I'm not going to, you know, be afraid to pull that trigger. Just want to give those guys a good at you know good chance to to solidify uh their skills and and get lots of playing time down in the ahl um 
So yeah, those guys are there. Obviously, our goaltenders have been set for a while now. Sorokin and Dostal. Um, did I remember that we signed Dostal to an extension? I don't remember. Uh, but Sorokin is going to lead the way out here. Um, and here's a big thing, right? He is 32 years old now. We still have him for three more years under contract. But we also have Dostal still kind of pushing that envelope. So it might be almost like a Tampa Bay situation where... If Sorokin goes down the playoffs and Dostal becomes our guy, then we might end up having to trade Sorokin, like type of that type of situation, uh, because Dostal's doing solid for us. I mean, he was solid in the AHL. He's been solid in the NHL. I mean, last year obviously we had to rely on him a lot due to injuries, and you know Sorokin, you know when we first got him was kind of like an average year, wasn't really doing too much. Then obviously first full year did amazing. That was that big year. I think that was the the Stanley Cup Finals run versus I think was it Buffalo, and then last year took a huge step back and didn't really perform too well at all. So I know injuries had a, a big factor in that, but that's something we got to keep an eye on because if we take a look at our AHL team, we end up trading away our AHL starting goaltender only because. He was kind of getting pushed out, right? He was already 25 years old, which is kind of that point of goaltenders where you're either going to need to be an NHL backup or you need to not really have much competition to solidify your spot. And unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess for us, we had two guys that were kind of knocking knocking on the door right behind him. And of course, our, uh, was it first round pick from a couple years ago, uh, finally, or sorry, second round pick from a couple years ago, Finally, is a good enough overall where we he can be on the team and actually be a good overall and actually perform. And hopefully, uh, soon enough, we can get him you know, in a good spot where he's playing a lot of games. And maybe we'll have to tra trade away our starting AHL goaltender to do that. Uh, but for now, we're going to you know, give him some backup time. Maybe his overall will increase above the other guy and he'll get all the playing time. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, this year, though, too, as far as the AHL goes... We actually have a lot of our prospects. So if we remember, what was it, two years ago, I think it was, we had a lot of draft picks, right? We we traded back, traded, you know, a lot of picks to get, what was it, like three or four or something like that, first round picks, along with a couple early seconds, if I remember correctly. Well, now those guys have started to show up. So uh, Bo Armstrong being one of them, uh, we have Zane Land in here. Uh, who is there's a couple other ones in here Helmerson's up there uh, Obviously, we still have Stenberg a couple uh, like we have some really good young guys here along with Martinson Bentley uh, Who else is down here? V uh, Sammy Hino so a lot of these guys are here and they're ready to play so You know, we're gonna have to start being being mindful for guys that aren't performing those guys on the bubble those older guys that you know, it's either like step up or step aside because they're they're coming. And, you know, I'm excited for it. Not that I want to, you know, drastically change our team and trade away all of our veterans. But at the same time, we got some young guys that are going to be competing for spots. So I've talked long enough. We're ready to get into the first half of the season and go from there. So let's go about 15 to 20 games, kind of half or kind of like a quarter way through the year and see how our team does. See if Inglis is kind of fitting up to what we want him to be. And if not, we'll uh, we'll swap him with someone else. So let's get up to the 15th of our next month in November. And hopefully our team kind of shows a little bit of promise right from the start here. Terry, come on. You're you're off the first line for one year. Like we are five games into the season and already three people have complained about ice time. Can we go more than two games without someone complaining about ice time? Please and thank you. All right, let's keep going. Six, two, and two. Not bad. Eight, two, and two. Let's keep that going. We'll take that, right? Top of the division, I mean, we'll take that. We beat the LA Kings in the first round. Works for us. All right. So, 11-2-2. Two, two. We're the best team in the league currently. Uh, what is that? 11-2-2, two, two, 15 games. So, right where we wanted to be. Um, how's our team doing? I know we're still early, and I know we're doing really well. But at the same time, how are guys doing, right? Especially English. Six points plus four, seven and a half, or not seven and a half, seven, almost eight minutes of playing time on average a night. I mean, we're doing too well right now that everyone's doing almost more than they're used to. The only thing I need to fix, though, 
is Inglis's playing time. Now, being a two-way guy, you think he'd be good on like penalty kill or you know something like that. But also, the guys that are ahead of him right now makes it hard to give him playing time, especially given the superstars on our team. Well, I'll find out when I edit the video, but we accidentally didn't unpause the recording. But this entire time, we mentioned it. Um, we were doing well the entire time. We got up to 23-9 and nine at one point, went a little bit of a loss spree, and now we sit at the halfway point of the year. And I know I just said it for myself, but apparently I screwed up and I didn't actually unpause it. So we'll rewind it a little bit. We'll kind of talk it all through again and you know make it a little bit quicker so that way I don't have to edit nearly as long. But forward group, everyone's kind of doing what we need them to do. Uh, Zegers and Ehlers are top two once again. Um, I'll say it quicker this time so we're not spending so long on this. Um, we're probably going to swap Mercer and Terry back, uh, put Terry in the first line, Mercer back to the second. Um, Dano is doing better than McTavish, so that's good. We'd like a little bit more on McTavish, um, but we just, again, with being a third line centerman, it's just it's just hard, right? We need as much as we can out of everybody. Um, Inglis, doing okay, 15 points, 10 goals, uh, 41 games played. We tried to put him in more lines. It didn't really help much. He kind of improved. I think it was like 30 seconds or something total time on ice on average. So we'd like that to be a little bit better. But unfortunately, just due to our team, due to how good we are, it's just not really possible. So that kind of sucks. Defensively, though, Drysdale, as I tried to mention, is on pace for a career year. 27 points at the halfway mark. So we're looking, uh, you know, looking forward to see what he kind of finishes up with. Because 25 years old, he's still young. He's got lots of experience under his belt so far. And he's been in the league for a, a little bit now. So uh, he's 25 this year, 24, 23, 22, 21, 19, 18. So ever since 18, we'll say that he's been in the league. So obviously he's been doing something ever since he came into the league. So you know, ever since we've had him and we've taken over the franchise, you know, we, we've had some ups and downs. We've had some really consistency out of him. Uh, defensively, not so much. Uh, but again, we kind of have gone uh, a little bit inconsistent as it is. So hopefully we're looking out for a career year from Drysdale. Goaltender Sorokin, we'd like him to be a little bit better. Um, but Dostal is holding down the backup spot perfectly. You know, as far as Sorokin goes... So Soroki, we want to be a little bit better. He's kind of been up and down for a superstar goaltender. We want some more out of him. Uh, other than that, I mean, team stats look good. We're going to try to fine-tune that, try to see if we can get any more guys some playing time and kind of go from there. So that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'm looking forward to the rest of the year and hopefully get in a nice playoff run under our belt. But as always, guys, if you did enjoy, hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, guys, we'll see you in the next one.